All right, we have a brand new season of anime coming in summer 2024, and we're going to look over every anime that's going to be airing and go over it, read it, kind of get the vibe, just kind of check it out and decide if we're going to watch it or not. First up, we have... Boom. Maogun... Okay, I don't, I don't know how to fucking pronounce this, bro. Basically, this one is like... Uh... Oh, yeah, we, we, we read a... What's it called? We read a, the strongest magician is a demon lord's army was a human. I think this is the trailer where there was like a skeleton dude that was like going in as the demon lord's army and like kind of like trying to make peace with the humans. It seems pretty interesting. I'm not sure if this is an isekai. Ike is a powerful magician and the leader of an immortal brigade. Part of the seventh corps of the demon lord's army. He single-handedly conquers fortresses and pushes back the armies of humanity. Neither Dairokuten, the demon lord, nor Ike's loyal soldiers know his darkest secret. He's a human in hiding! Oh no! But can he keep his secret safe and bring peaceful coexistence to demons and humans? Um, because it already has like that demon lord kind of like vibe, right? I feel like animes like this... We'll definitely check out. I feel like this is in our ballpark and maybe it's going to make a fun anime to watch. So we'll probably check out one episode of this and I believe it's actually airing tomorrow, right? And something that else is airing tomorrow in 12 hours and 36 minutes, we have Isekai Suicide Squad. Isekai Suicide Squad is a show that I'm sure you guys know what this is. Like Harley Quinn, you know, DC, Batman, Dark Knight, stuff like that. But this isn't Batman. This is just Suicide Squad. It's like the evil people. In the crime-ridden city of Gotham, Amanda Waller, the head of Argus, has assembled a group of notorious criminals for a mission. Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Peacemaker, Clayface, and King Shark. These five, these supervillains, are sent into an otherworldly realm that's connected to this world through a gate. It's a sword and magic where orcs rampage and dragon rules the sky. An isekai! I don't think we have to really read this rest of this, but we've checked out the trailers. We've definitely checked out even all the character promos, so we'll be checking this out tomorrow as well. There's no promises of any anime that we're going to, you know, watch if we're going to keep it or not. It all depends on your performance, remember, at the end of the day. Next up, we have Shy Tokyo Dakanhen. What is this? The second season of Shy dropped because we haven't seen the second season. What is this one? Oh, this is the Boomer anime. This one is called... Osan, newbie adventurer, trained to death by the most powerful party, became invincible. We've seen a trailer for this one, right? We've seen a trailer for this where it's basically, uh... This dude is, uh, uh, like a washed up old man, and now he's taking his time to, you know, fucking join a party and become like an adventurer and live his dreams. I, we checked out a trailer. The performance of the trailer was pretty bad. But a performance of a trailer is not indicative of the overall performance of the actual reaction. So we'll probably check out episode one and then go on from there. Next one, we have Boku no Shima wa Kanjo ga nai, which means uh, my wife has no emotion. <laughs> my wife has no emotion. Uh, Takuma is a single guy who does nothing but go to work and come home. Okay, so the main demographic is already basically every person that graduates college and gets a job and is too busy and tired to do anything after work, right? Too tired to do chores, he decides to get a robot to cook and keep the house. Mina-chan is such a good housekeeper. Takuma jokes that she could become his wife. <laughs> Mina takes Takuma jokes seriously and slowly the two start doing more things together, like having a picnic outside. As time goes by... Takuma starts to fall for Mina, but can a human in a room ever have an equal loving relationship? <laughs> Are we gonna watch this? I don't know. I don't. I. I feel like. Listen, animes like this, first episode might do well just because of the overall premise, right? It's like this viral moment of you know reincarnate as a vending machine. What? A vending machine? It's kind of crazy, right? So everyone's going to check out the first episode and drop it because they're not actually there for the story. Whether or not the story is good, I don't know. But uh, no promises on whether or not we're not going to we're going to watch. I'm honestly leaning towards it not going to watch. But like, again, if this show does really well on other people's channels and there's a lot of interest for it, we can simply pick it up later on as we go. OK, next we have... Tasuketsu. What is this? This one is called a uh, Fate of the Majority. A student finds himself in a game of survival as half the human population disappears each night. That's actually pretty interesting. Hold up. This one is actually pretty interesting. Like an anime where 
It's like a survival game and people keep getting called 50%. Like Thanos keeps snapping every time. Um, It's probably going to be a show where it does okay for a bit, then falls off hard. Just like many of the other shows that's not really Isekai focused because our channel's flavor is Isekai. Uh, I, uh, the plot sounds pretty interesting. I kind of want to check it out, but my YouTuber instinct is telling me that my audience doesn't really give a fuck about it, but un undecided. Un undecided on this one. Next one. We have... Oshinoko Season 2, baby! I couldn't even recognize that this is Oshinoko based on the cover picture because the cover picture is supposed to be the movie that they're gonna film, right? It's supposed to be some kind of, uh... Back in the days, feudal Japan days, where Lolly Senpai is gonna be a Tom girl, right? It's a boy that has like a Tom girl outfit. And then, the, and then there's another girl, Akane, right? She's also there. And those two are gonna be competing over Aqua's affection, I think, right? That's the overall arc. So Aqua's desire for revenge. Yeah, we know about this. We're definitely gonna check this out. Absolutely. I hope that it does well. I don't know. A lot of people are kind of upset about this show. A lot, a lot of people are kind of like upset about this show due to the events of the manga and you know mm, i don't want to spoil you guys and i haven't really been spoiled myself but i see some thumbnails and i'm like we're going to alabama i don't know i don't know i, I wonder if people are still going to be interested in oceanoku even though this shit went off the rails but uh we'll check this one out for sure we will we will definitely check out oceanoku for sure next one oh my waifu is a Russian girl. Alia, yeah, we know. We've already checked out a trailer for this, right? We know, we know. We're gonna check it out. The funniest thing about this anime is that in the trailer, I ask people, it's like, whoa, yo, is this like fluent Russian? Because look at me, do I look fucking Russian? Actually, apparently some Asian people do live in Russia. Anyways, um, apparently the Russian was absolutely butchered. Apparently, the Russian was just absolutely fucking butchered and it's cringe. Like native Russian speakers are commenting saying, this is a mistake. What is going on? So I'm not here saying this shit is in a representation of your language, your culture, but we're going to check it out because obviously a lot of people are hyping this stuff up. Next anime. Gimai Seikatsu. Uh, what is this one? This is called... De <laughs> this is Days with my stepsister. When his father remarries, Yuta Asamura winds up sharing a roof with his new stepsister, Saki Ayase, the hottest girl in his grade, carrying the scars of their parents' troubled divorces. They vow to maintain a respectful, respectful distance. Respectful, huh? That shit didn't last long. That shit didn't last long because the trailer, they were already fucking ready to just get feral with each other. But what starts as cautious com camaraderie blossoms into something deeper from shared experiences. Is it admiration, familial love, or something else? It's fucking incest. It's fucking incest. Oh, come on now. Don't, don't act like you're going to try to fucking create some kind of unique love story by putting fucking, you know, step siblings in the same house, trying to make it deeper than it seems. You know what you're fucking doing. And I'm going to watch at least episode one of it. Animes like this, again, first episode's going to be amazing in terms of performance because everyone's going to see the title. They're going to see what in the fuck is this anime? Alabama ass, step sibling, I'm stuck kind of ass anime, right? So... We're gonna be checking it out, and I guarantee you it's gonna fall off if the story is actually not that good. Because everyone just cares about the viral moments of, you know, what is this new anime? Are you serious? This is what this anime is about? So, we'll check it out for that purpose. Next up, we have... Oh, this is Yaoi. I don't even have to see. This is Yaoi. This is Yaoi. Yeah, okay. This is called Twilight Out of Focus. If I look at every guy character here... This is straight up out of a BL, bro. Every one of these models look like a fucking male VTuber model, bro. This is a Yaoi show. My audience is not about Yaoi or BL. I'm sorry. There's maybe some other channels that you can watch this on. I'm sorry. We ain't watching that. And now, behold, this is my most anticipated anime of this season. Do you know why? Because this is an anime where the main character only parries. 
I think there is something so compelling about a one-trick pony that decides I'm only gonna be parrying. Now, the trailer reaction did fucking terrible. I don't think there's a lot of advertisement put into the show, and there's a good chance that the anime could be absolute dog shit, right? I have no clue what this is gonna look like. I hope that it's good, but... Ugh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I like This is like my personal taste, but... In the game of YouTube, it's not about what I like. It's about what my audience likes. And I want to try at least episode one and go on from there. But essentially, this, this dude, like, <laughs> he only parries. Nothing else. He only parries. And there's something so compelling about that. Next up, we have Megami second season. I'm sorry. This is second season content. I haven't seen the first season. Next up, we have Giji Harem, which translates to Pseudo Harem. So it's a harem that's not a harem? Eiji Kitahama joins a drama club with dreams of having harem like... <laughs> so bro read a manga and he saw that the main character has a harem. So he joined a club, a drama club at high school and wants a harem, but it happened. Rin Nanakura, an underclassman, find herself crushing hard on Eiji. How lucky is this guy? How lucky is this guy? And tries on different personas in his presence to win him over. No matter how she acts, one thing is certain. Her feelings for AG continues to grow stronger. Will she ever be, tell be able to tell him the truth and be herself? What the fuck? So like, main character wants a harm because he plays too many games and watches too much anime. He goes to high school, joins a drama club, and there's a girl that just folds for him easily. And she keeps chasing after him. I feel bad for the girl, bro. I feel like, I don't know, I don't know what the main character is going to be like, but I just kind of like feel bad for this girl. Well, maybe if a girl like this is going to be willing to just get fold and just fold and just like chase after this, you know, this guy. It's on you, actually. Yeah. Fuck you. You're a terrible person. You should be, you should know better. I'm going to fucking victim blame right now. Aka Nanakura, Rin Nanakura. Uh oh, there's siblings here. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, this is the sister. Okay, no, 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 we're abort, abort. I'm not watching this. I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna be watching this. I'm probably not, I'm probably not gonna be watching this. Okay, next anime. Senpai wa otoko no Yeah, we, we made a trailer on this one. Uh, this one is called My Crossing, My Cross-Dressing Senpai. This is him, can't be anyone else. Yep, uh, My Cross-Dressing Trap Senpai. Can true love really overcome any obstacles? Saki, a high school student, confesses her feelings to Makoto. Taken aback, Makoto reveals the secret. I have a dick, but the sudden discovery doesn't seem to bother Saki, who is already heads over feels for him. After being rejected, Saki asks Ryuji, Makoto's childhood friend. Right, it's a love triangle where the childhood friend, right? It's a love triangle where the main character is a trap. There's a girl that wants the, the trap and then realizes he has a dick, but it's fine. But then the trap's best friend is actually the main love interest. That's what it seems like in the in the trailers. We will be checking out again, you know, viral, you know, the controversial animes like this. We're gonna check out episode one and kind of go on from there, okay? This should be spicy. Coming out in eight days, guys. Next up. Oh, judging by the cover picture alone here. Judging by the cover picture alone here, this kind of actually reminds me of Kashishiro for some reason. Because of the main character design and this girl over here. But, uh, this is looking like a shitty Isa kind of making, huh? Alright, what is this called? This one is called... Failure Frame. I became the strongest and annihilated everything with low-level spells. <laughs> so he only uses low-level spells after he became super OP. Toka Mimori and his classmates are abruptly- OH! CLASSMATES! I love isekais where classmates are also brought in, not just one character, because there's a chance that like there's shitty people in the class and that we can just shoot on, kind of like Ari Furata. His classmates are abruptly catapulted into a fantasy world summoned by the resident goddess to serve as heroes. The good news? Most of the students displaying amazing skills upon rival. The bad? Mimori is the worst of the lot, bottoming out as a measly E rank. Incensed, the goddess tossed him into a dungeon to die. But in turn, it turns out that Mimori's skills aren't so much worthless. Ah, uh, they're abnormal. Abnormally powerful, perhaps. So, classic example, you know, of an isekai or main character probably gets bullied. Like, if you look here, right? 
This guy is literally that kid from Marifura to this piece of shit that probably bullies us, right? This is straight up fucking uh, uh, the, uh, the the main priest girl that, you know, fucking loves the main character for no reason. This is probably Koki or I don't know, but the goddess is a piece of shit. So another isekai. Another isekai where the main character is a loser, gets bullied maybe, and then gets transported and gets shitty powers and seemingly it's over. But wait, it's actually super OP. It's something like that, right? So yeah, there's also Rimuru on the shoulder here. If you can't see, there's also Rimuru here. Man, did this leopard, was this a student? It, 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 did this, is this a student that got turned into a leopard? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we'll be checking this out. Absolutely. This is a type of the show that, you know, like, if there is, like, 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 if we could identify our channel, it's going to be power, pa power fantasy, harem, or like shitty isekai, right? Ideally, everything in one, but <laughs> it's one of those animes. We're going to check it out for sure. We're going to check it out for sure. Next anime, Grand Zizir U, um, what is this one? This is a mech anime. Uh, it looks very old fashioned. Nostalgic of like 1990s or 2000s anime. I don't have any. I have no faith that my audience would like this anime. I don't know if it's good or not. It has nothing to do with it. In the game of YouTube, it's all about, you know, whether or not my audience is willing to watch. I don't think this is. My instincts tell me this is not it. No offense to that anime. 2.5 Jigen no Ririsa. I have no interest in real girls. So, I did see cover pictures for this, and the designs are pretty peak. Let's see, let's see the synopsis at least. So claims Okumu Okamura. I have no interest in real girls. So claims Okumura, the president of the school's manga club. He's your typical otaku, obsessed with sexy, fictional 2D manga characters known as Lilial. And then the news. What? Okay, okay. So he's obsessed with, you know, 2D girls. They're known as Lilials, though, these girls, I guess. Then a new school year starts, and a real 3D girl named Lilisa, com uh, right, really common with the name Lilial right here, right? Whose passion is cosplay joins the club. Lilisa convinces Okumura to become a photographer, and guess where her favorite manga character is? The Lilials, right? Not only that, but Lilisa is into modeling and fetishy stuff. The boundary. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, my dress up darling, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, this is My Dress Up Darling, where main character is just... Well, in My Dress Up Darling, it was different, right? We watched that in my old channel before it got deleted. My Dress Up Darling was a story of Gojo, not Satoru, who is got shunned for, you know, like makeup and, you know, making, you know, pretty dresses and stuff. And a girl said, fuck, that's your cringe. And he got a trauma. And then a Gyaru kind of pulls him out of the shell and they do cosplay stuff. Here, the main character is just a degenerate piece of shit. <laughs> and a girl just shows up and says, I want to do fetish stuff for you. And... He's like, ew, 3D, gross. But like, uh, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'm undecided about this one. It seems kind of interesting on the premise. Maybe it's gonna be um interesting because maybe the main character is gonna be super based, right? Maybe the main character will be like super based and be like, oh, 3D. I only fuck 2D and says no. Maybe there could be something fun about it. Undecided about this one. Undecided. Next anime, we have Near Automata, and uh, I say that we just play this fucking game on stream rather than watching the anime. We tried this first season here on this channel. It fell, it fell off so hard. It did really bad. The scheduling just messed everything. If you guys watched this during season one, and we're not talking shit about Near, the game, it has nothing to do with it. The anime, season one, if you were there, like, the scheduling was so bad. So many delay on delay on delay. Everyone forgot about it. It already performed bad in my channel. For what it was, was it was... Very thought-provoking couple episodes, but it, it's just... I don't know. I'm probably gonna skip this one because we're, we haven't even finished season one. I'd rather play the game, to be honest. Next up, we have... What is this one? Dungeon no Naka no Hito. Uh, don't know about this one. On the hunt... Wait, wait, let's see. The English name is Dungeon People. On the hunt for her missing father... Master Thief Clay heads off into an unexplored dungeon, but much to her surprise, the dungeon's caretaker offers her a job. Thievery hasn't worked out for her thus far, so perhaps this new career path will take her closer to finding her dad. But changing is never easy, from interviewing monster guardians to positioning traps for confound would-be explorers. Clay has a lot to learn about what it means to be one of the dungeon people. So, this is pretty interesting. It is not your standard go into a dungeon and adventure and kill monster and loot. 
It's more about a girl that's trying to find her missing father, and she's honestly taking like a caretaker job, setting up stuff. It's like maintenance. So it's a very unique taste on dungeon kind of animes, which is special for sure. Now, would people be actually interested in a story like this? I'm not too sure. I'm sure that this anime might be fun slice of life wise, but beyond this initial premise of a unique way of just being the, you know, caretaking dungeons, does the story have anything else to offer to actually go into next gear and keep people, you know, enticed? I am undecided about this one. Next anime. This one is called... Quality Assurance in Another World. <laughs> Here is the, uh, here's the picture. Quality assurance in another world. Quality assurance to me because, you know, I used to work as a software engineer. QA just means like you're testing products and making sure there's no bugs and, you know, fixing shit up. So let's read this. Despite its location in a remote region in the south continent of Felnark, the island of Claiborne is made up of five small countries crowded together and in constant conflict. Already the world building is pretty fucking deep, huh? In most remote reaches of the smallest and most peaceful countries in the island, the Kingdom of Bale is the small village where a girl named Nicola lives a humble life. One day, while she's out gathering firewood, as she does every day, a massive dragon, a creature that's supposed to only live deep in the mountains, appears in front of her. Just as it's about to attack the village, a man named Haga rushes to the scene. Haga is a member of the King's Seekers, a top secret investigation team. Nicola has never once felt bored with their peaceful life, even when every single day is practically the same. But after meeting Haga, she is so intrigued by Haga and his travels that she decides to step out into the world herself, and then learns the true nature of her world. So the synopsis already makes it seem like this is a pretty in-depth anime, huh? The description makes it seem like they're actually like they're actually giving a fuck about the world building, and there seems to be some kind of mystery about the true nature of the world. This could be a sleeper, a hidden sleeper. The title itself is kind of lackluster. Quality assurance in another world. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? I feel like it has potential, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to let this one cook. I'm not sure if I want to trailblaze and immediately go into this one, right? I, I, I don't know how to feel about this one. But it seems like they're actually giving a fuck about the plot. Maybe I'm getting baited. I'm not sure. Next. We have Season 2 Card Fight Vanguard. I'm sorry, I, I haven't seen, you know, Vanguard Card Fight Season 1, so that's not it. Next we have... What is this one called? Dahlia in Bloom Crafting as a Fresh Start with Magical Tools. This is Comedy Fantasy Romance, and let's look at the cover picture. Hmm, nothing too special about this. It's a fantasy kind of world. It's a native isekai anime. Is it isekai? After dying of overwork in Japan. I see, it's isekai. It's isekai. Dahlia is reborn into a world filled with magic. <laughs> Didn't even die to Truckun, by the way. Died of overworking. Raised by a master of magical tool milking, tomb making, uh, she develops a passion for the craft and becomes engaged to her father's apprentice. Before her father can even see her wed, however, he suddenly passes away. As if this wasn't enough, on the day before her wedding, her fiancé announces that he's in love. But not with her! WAIT! Plot twist! Dahlia finally realizes she needs to live for herself. She gets cucked immediately. Her dad dies and then... then... <laughs> so she gets cucked and her dad dies. She vows to be her own woman from now on and devote herself to her craft. Even if, okay, she's going the Andrew tight fucking route, okay? She's an independent woman who you don't need though, man. Let's fucking go. Even if it's not quiet, the quiet life she was hoping for. From a chance encounter with the night to starting with her own company, there are challenges of pl plenty on the horizon. But this young craftswoman is no longer a sinking, shrinking violet. She's a Dahlia, and she's ready to bloom. Ha. Huh. It's an isekai. And it seems to be more of an isekai not related towards battling, but more through craftsmanship, merchantry, logistics, kind of like that. What do you guys think about this one? It is an isekai, and it might do well on my channel, but a female lead, not saying a female lead is bad, but the nature of this story, I wonder if my audience could relate to this female character trying to be her independent woman and, you know, making out on her own, starting a company, different stuff like that. I'm not too sure. 
It's a slice of life isekai, and I do love slice of life isekai as like campfire cooking in another world. It's just so fun and cozy and, and good to watch, but undecided about this. Undecided about this one. Next up, we have... What's this one called? The story of an exploration hero who has worked his way up from a common people and nobody's way up to an exploration hero level. Fuck you. Already dropped. Already dropped. How the fuck am I gonna make a YouTube title out of this? Like, like... I, I can't... I only have so many characters... <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Uh, let's see the cover picture of this. Let's see the cover picture of this. Lollies. Lollies, lollies, lollies. Main character, Harem. Big girl, Nate on here, but lollies. A lot of lollies. Taito Takagi is a low status high schooler. Ah, classic. Trying to relate to their main demographic. A background mob character, you might say. He's just a low level explorer who hunts slimes every day in dungeons that appear all around Japan. <gasps> Solo leveling! Wait, wait, wait! Solo leveling style! It's not, you know, transported to a different world. Slimes are appearing in Japan. Earning pocket money while admiring his childish friend, the class queen from afar. One day, a golden slime he had never seen appears before him. After he defeats it, it drops an extremely rare item worth hundreds of millions. A card that can summon mythical beings. After he de uh, decides to activate the summon, a warrior maiden with unparalleled beauty appears. So I'm going to assume the warrior beauty is going to be this girl over here. So the premise of the story is in Japan, uh, monster slice decides to show up. Our NPC character is trying to win the grace of the hottest girl school by farming and then gets lucky and now has a warrior summon. It could be fun, trashy power fantasy show. Harem power fantasy kind of deal. I'm willing to check out one episode. I, my instincts are telling me that this is the kind of shitty shows that we could enjoy together. I'm willing to check out one episode. Yeah, I'm willing to check out the one episode. Next up, this one is called the Elusive Samurai. Let's see the, let's see the uh, picture. Shows like this never do well on my channel. It doesn't. Like, I don't know if if there isn't some sort of like you know isekai element to it. You know, even if this is like you know power fantasy, maybe ah, we'll see. Set in feudal Japan in between Kamakura and Muromachi periods, our hero Hojo Takatoki is a boy on the run that history but all forgot. When the Kamakura shogunate is overthrown by the Ashikaga Takauji, Takatoki's family, and standings are viciously taken away from him, and he must flee from afar to reach his land to survive and seek out his revenge. Revenge plots... Okay. Okay. How do you guys feel about this one? I feel like, um... Maybe they're going the uh, BBL Shota, 7th Shota route with this. It's going to be a trap main character. Um, no, I haven't seen Assassin Class Room. Um, this kind of anime... Hmm. This kind of anime, would you... What do you guys think? Like, ah... Uh... Like, for example, Hell's Paradise is another anime that should that was pretty hype but didn't do well because their overall setting, even though it, it, it just feels like one of those animes, you know? I am undecided about this one. My instincts tell me, no. But maybe they're gonna do some crazy shit and maybe it's gonna be the next Seventh Prince and it's gonna be amazing. I don't know. Next up. Uh, we have... Let's see. Shoshimin, How to Become Ordinary. Uh, Rom-com anime? Mystery anime, actually. Mystery anime. The story centers on Jogoro Kobato, who wishes to live a quiet and ordinary life after a painful experience. I guess he got dumped. He and Yuki Osanai from a mutually beneficial friendship. Oh, they're fuck buddies? As Yuki also wants the same thing. They start high school as classmates with a plan to spend their peaceful days as ordinary people. But unfortunately, they keep getting wrapped up in mysteries and disasters as they happen one after the other. Hmm. So it's not a rom-com. It's a mystery show. I don't know what kind of mysteries this is gonna be. It depends on what kind of twist this anime is gonna have. If it's gonna be some crazy shit that happens, then like, maybe it's worth checking out. But my instance tells me that no. My instance tells me no. I don't know. Next. This is an anime that we've already checked out. It's the Wistoria anime. It's the main character, can't use magic. But he can use a sword. 
Uh, the trailer performance was absolute dog shit. Let's read it. A hard-working boy named Will enters a magic academy in hopes of becoming a great sorcerer. Unfortunately, there's a fl fatal flaw in his plan. He lacks the ability to use magic. Amid the cold stares of his classmates and instructors. No, I did not skip the elf. Elf. Oh, it's over here. I'll get to, I'll, I'll get to the BBW one. Don't worry. Will feels discouraged at times, but he presses forward with unwavering determination. He can't use a wand, but he can wield a sword in his battle to reach the top of a magic-dominated world. He just needs to believe in his own unique strength and remember the promise he made with someone precious to him. So, this is, again, we checked out the trailer for this. It was looking pretty hype. It is, like, people call this, like, Black Clover, but, um... The animation looked amazing. I do love the whole premise of, you know, people looking down on us because we can't use magic, but psych, we got something even better, swordsmanship. So, Chivalry of a Failed Knight? Well, not quite, but it is similar in the in the main character being looked down on because he can't do a certain thing, but he can do something else and does really amazing, right? It's a common power fantasy formula that works pretty well. That's why it's a cliche. I'm willing to watch an episode of this. I just wonder if people will be down to watch that as well. Okay, next one is gonna be... Y'all know what this one is. So BBW is gonna be a tag in this uh, anime genre. What 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 does the actual fucking tag say? Tags are comedy. Oops, let's go back. Comedy, etchy, fantasy, slice of life. Where is the BBW? Where is the Jamaican tag? And no, I'm not racist. No, I'm not saying that Jamaican people watch this anime. However, I do know a Jamaican content creator named your boy Rock Lee. I think he's Jamaican. He was in the Twitter thread, you know, when this shit was going viral. And I saw him talking shit about this, saying like, damn, let's fucking go. And like, listen, nothing wrong about liking a thick woman, right? A BBW anime. Let's, let's read the fucking, you know, synopsis. Now a kun, a massage therapist, is about to head home for the day when he's saddled with a rather strange patient. This lovely lady has emerald eyes, pointy ears, and grew up in the forest. Everything about screams erif, except for one thing: her bodacious body. Bodacious indeed. Goddamn! Look at that thing. Look at it. Bodacious baby. It turns out she left her world but loved junk food in this one, and now her obsession has caught up with her. Can now I can help this lovable elf girl lose the weight and keep it off? A lot of thick women in this anime. There's there's one lolly here, but there's a lot of lot of thick ass women in this. This, this gotta be the thickest anime that I've ever seen in my life, right? <laughs> this has to be the thickest, the just voluptuous most anime ever. This is seemingly like again one of those animes where the first couple episodes will people will click on it because of the trends and the virality. Now, will it actually do well overall? I don't know. That depends on if the story is good. We're gonna check it out. Absolutely, we will check out at least episode one of this. Okay. Next one. Uh, we did these four. Next one is gonna be Fairy Tale. Uh, we're not watching Fairy Tale. I haven't even seen Fairy Tale like season one, so it's like you know. If you guys want to see Fairy Tale one day, like we could, it's a long ass, you know, shonen show. Next! Oh yeah! Kamino 2! Tower of God, second season. Uh, for the people that's on YouTube only, we've already finished watching Tower of God. The rest of the episodes will be uploaded just in time along with any news cut content, plus that it lines up just in time for second season, which is actually airing in 12 days. 11 days. Isn't that crazy? Tower of God is airing in 11 days. As in, we could have started this like yesterday or today and still be caught up in time if we did one episode a day. We have so much time with this. I had a lot of time to farm this shit. Ja Wang Nan. What the fuck name is Ja Wang Nan? Wang Nan Ja. Wang Nan Ja. Ja Wang Nan. Okay. Can't seem to pass. Is, is this a blonde guy or the fucking black haired guy? Well, let's. Okay. First of all. And the Tower of God season one. What do we see? Bomb's dead. It's not fucking Bomb's dad. Clearly a fucking... Clearly a time skip happened. Like, come on. You guys... Y'all are... It's so fucking obvious. Look at his face. Look at his eyes. It's fucking Bomb. No, it's Bomb's dad, man. It's 24th Bomb, bro. <laughs> but we have Bomb's dad here. And what is this? Is this Wang Nan? Cha Wang Nan here over here? Wang Nan can't seem to pass the 20th floor. Even after failing time and time again, he refuses to give up. On his journey, though, he meets a mysterious and powerful character named Viol. <gasps> Is this Viol? Okay, 
Maybe it's not bomb, guys. It's the uh, 24th of bomb. <laughs> Don't fucking veal. All right, it's, it's veal for now. Wangnan invites veal to join his team of the regulars. Their journey continues with the new challenges at every turn. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, where's veal, motherfuckers? I'm looking at the character list. Where's a veal, motherfuckers? I, I don't see veal in the fucking, you know, the fucking cast here. I do see a fucking kid that looks like veal. <laughs> so, no spoilers at all here, huh? There is no other description of what's going on with the time skip. What happened with Yu Han Song and Hua Ryun and what they're doing to bomb at the end of, you know, season one when Rachel pushed. What is Rachel doing right now? Climbing with the rest, rest of everybody. Like, there's a... A lot of stuff that's going on that they're not telling, which I'm very happy they're not telling us about. We're definitely going to be watching. We're definitely going to be watching. Next up. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yo, this anime. I know my channel's not going to watch this, but it looks so fun. It's an old anime. It's a wrestling anime. It looks so fun. It looks so goofy, but like, ugh. yeah, we can't be watching this for performance reasons. I'll probably just get high and watch this by myself one night, bro. Next up, the most anticipated anime. You know what's crazy about this anime? Here, let me, show, let me, let me show you actually. If we go to my YouTube channel right now, here, I, I wanna show you guys something. Actually, we're over here. If we go to my YouTube channel, and by the way, guys, go poll, go go vote. Gaming, game, gaming content, we're gonna poll to see what, what kind of games we're gonna be playing on stream. Looking like getting over is winning. But uh, if you look at my most viewed videos and sort by popular, bro, 23k, 23k. What the fuck happened? I know what happened. I was early. I was first to, you know, making these trailer reactions. And there was a huge interest. It went viral, right? The whole Nokotan dance thing, the whole Nokotan, you know, song thing went viral. And I just happened to get lucky. And it got put in the first page when, you know, search results were up. So that's what happened. That's why I hit for like 23k each. But like, is it actually going to be good? I don't think there's anything you need to really know about this. Like, this, you know, like... Reading the synopsis is probably pointless. This show is basically about a show where there's a deer that's a human, but it's a human that's a deer. It's a, it's a deer human. It's nonstop fun. People are comparing this to like Nichijou. People are calling this like, oh, this is the modern day Nichijou. It's just crazy brain rot. Don't think too hard about it. It's just a fucking acid trip. The creators, you know, did some crazy... I want to smoke whatever the fuck they're smoking. They did some crazy shit and they made this crazy product. I'm pretty excited. I'll check out episode one for sure. I will definitely check it out. Next up, we have Nare Nare, cheer for you. This is the director's face. <laughs> I don't know why this is funny. That I see a director like this, and then, then I see the cover picture for this. <laughs> He's very happy. <laughs> what a giga chat. He made us this, bro. <laughs> so it looks very cute, right? It looks very cute. What is it about? Misora Kanata is a first year student on the Takanosaki High School cheerleading team. She won a national championship in middle school, but can't jump after Miss Skin a competition. Whoa! Wait! This is a sports anime in disguise. This is a... This is... This could be actually very, like, dramatic. So, it's a cheerleader contest where a girl, like, won before national championship, but broke something, and now can't jump anymore. She befriends some friends to form pom-poms. Their new team goes beyond cheerleading to reach the hearts of the people they cheer on. They might just change the world. It honestly sounds like a very heartwarming story. But... Would people actually be down to watch this? I don't think you guys are. Mm. Cheerleader tournament arc will probably exist, but like... I am undecided about this one. I don't think people would give a fuck about this. But the premise looks pretty interesting to me. Next one is called... VTuber legend, how I went viral after forgetting to turn off my stream. <laughs> did she start jacking off? Did she did she end stream but she didn't end stream and she started fucking jacking? Oh, what happened? What what what, what fucking happened here? Let's let, look at the cover picture here. Yeah, I got a bunch of cute girls. All right, a lot of VTuber girls. All right, all right. Yuki Tanaka is a VTuber at Live On, one of Japan's largest VTuber companies. Okay, so. Hololive, your favorite Hololive girl, as the polite and lady like Awayuki Kor Kokorone. Kokorone? Korone? Is this a direct reference to Korone? You know? 
One day she forgets to end the stream, and viewers see her real personality. Irrelevant, improper, and prone to imbibing after a long day. So she basically got tilted. So, so basically this is what she did. She's about to end the stream like this. She's about to be like, Oh, I'm so happy that you guys all watch my stream. Thank you so much. Mwah. You're all my family. See you tomorrow. And then she did this. And she's like, Fuck, I hate this job. Fuck, this chat's so creepy. God damn, I hate this shit. Oh, can't believe I gotta do this every day. Oh, and she's like, Oh, wait, is, is the stream still on? Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> That's the whole premise of it. Um, it could be fun. Yuki is surprised to find that her accident caused her rankings to multiply. So she doubled down and gets to work. She'll be a star yet. So, I mean, this is a random tangent. Um, obviously when you're doing VTubing, you're supposed to like play a character. But me, I'm not really playing a character. I'm just like being me. I'm just basically taking my base personality and just like cranking it up to like a 12 out of 10 to be on for the camera to keep it engaging. But I think that at the end of the day, all you have to do is be yourself. But there are exceptional cases like this where like you try to portray a certain image of yourself and it might not go as well as you expected. Like if they're trying to if they're trying to make her to be like a unicorn, you know, if they're trying to make her to be all sweet and wholesome and then she's actually a fucking monster ghrelin behind the scenes. Some people might actually enjoy that more as a gap moe and then it might, you know, be even better like that. So I don't know if, if it's going to work out for her. It's great for her. Will we check it out? I don't know. I'm not sure. The character designs looks really good. It looks like a very cunny anime. It's a comedy and slice of life. <sighs> I kind of want to check it out. I, I kind of want to check it out. I'm undecided, but I do kind of like the general premise of a cute uwu girl just taking her mask off and just being like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> ew. Like the Konosuba season three episode. Remember the dryad girl? So, oh, friend, you gonna kill me? And then as soon as we go, she's like, ugh. <laughs> she just changes her entire personality, right? So maybe, may maybe. Next up, oh boy, this one is called A Journey Through Another World, Raising Kids While Adventuring. Uh, this is Boku no Pico, but Isekai. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Kaya no Takumi is accidentally killed by a god and reincarnated. Accidentally killed by a god? Granted a variety of skills, he is sent to a danger, dangerous monster infested forest in another world. In the woods, Takumi encounters a young boy and girl who look like twins, and he decides to take care of them and names them Alan and Edena. Surprised by how easily they defeat monsters with their combat abilities, Takumi arrives in town and registers with the Adventurous Guild in order to provide for them. Thus begins his laid-back adventuring life as he watches over Alan and Edena's growth. So... <laughs> Did he? Did, did he isekai? Drake isekai? <laughs> Dr. Disrespect isekai? <laughs> Yo! Are you guys following the Dr. Disrespect drama right now? I don't, I don't expect you guys to, you know, know everything going on, but, um... I don't think it's gonna be like that. Maybe it's a really wholesome anime, man. May, may, maybe it's a really wholesome anime where the guy is like, Oh, I can be a dad and raise these kids and, you know, stuff like that. I'd be willing to check out an episode or two. It is an isekai and, you know, maybe there can be some fun viral moments coming out of it. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. All right. Next anime. This one is called Mayonaka Punch. Let's look at the cover picture. Okay, it's pretty pretty. It, it's all girls, huh? This girl reminds me of that one girl from My Hero Academia. I don't know what her name is, uh, but okay. Mayonaka Punch. Masaki did now a former member of the popular new tuber group, Harikiri Sisters, after a career setback, aka getting fired unexpectedly via live stream. <laughs> she got fired. Wait, so she went full content creation and she was like part of a group that manages her and then they fired her during a live stream. She joins forces with the live, a partner with superhuman abilities. Together they aim with live. Her name is live. So I'm going to assume this girl here, right? The non-human looking one is live. Uh, together they aim to create a sensational content and reach 1 million subscribers. Will they reach their content dreams or be hit with the block button? <laughs> um, 
It seems like... Is it a Yuri show? What is this? Tags. It says comedy. What do you guys think about this? It seems like a very meta anime about content creation and YouTubing. I mean, the most recent one was Viral Hit and that did pretty bad on my channel. Uh, uh, I'm not too sure. I... I don't, I don't know. The whole premise doesn't really entice me that much. I don't want to get fucking backseated. I don't want to get fucking backseated by this bullshit anime telling me how to run a YouTube channel. <laughs> I honestly like the VTuber anime more than this. You like this more than the VTuber anime? I I I, I don't know. It's like... Eh. eh. Undecided. Undecided. I don't know. I'm not sold. Next up. Oh! Next up. Okay. The title of this already has Isekai in it. This is called... No longer human. In another world, disqualified from another world, Isekai Shikaku. Okay. Let's look at the cover picture. All right. What do you think? It looks pretty generic, right? It looks pretty trash. Uh, I mean, it's already hitting the fucking check marks, right? Fucking Isekai. Power fantasy, right? Revenge story, maybe. I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Pulled into an otherworldly adventure with cute sidekicks and superpowers. You think Osamu hit the jackpot? Nope. From a time before Pixels, the early 20th century gloomy author just wants to find a quiet place to meet his maker. Not to rack up XP. So he's just chilling. He doesn't want to like grind and be strong. Sadly, his poetic demise is constantly thwarted by inconvenient heroics. Dive into the hilariously tragic life of the most reluctant hero. So, it sounds like this dude doesn't want to be a hero. He doesn't want to do anything. He's just chilling, but dumb shit happens. Sounds like comedy is a focal point of this as well. He just wants to die? Um, I'm definitely going to check out an episode of this because obviously, you know, this is our flavor of the channel. It's a shitty isekai channel, so I'm down. I'll check out one episode. Next one is called Koiwa. Uh, what's this called? Love is indivisible for simple... <laughs> So you basically, this is even worse than my living with my stepsister, right? Love is indivisible for siblings. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Jun Shirasaki's love life takes a wild turn when he finds himself caught between the Jin Guji twins. Oh, never mind. It's not instant. It's not instant. Never mind. Never mind. His childhood friend who are as different as night and day, Rumi, the oldest sister. Pairs with the boy's charm with the maiden's art, while Naori combines the girlish looks with her deep love for otaku culture. So we have a tomboy girl, and then we have a weeb. Basically, there's a tomboy and a weeb. Uh, as feelings grow and confusion mounts, Jin must navigate this unexpected love triangle next door. Eh. Eh. I don't know. Here's the uh, cover picture. What do you know? I don't know. I, eh. 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 I think I think this is a skip for us. Rom com already. I prefer if the rom coms focus more on the com. And if I don't know, I like. Eh, I don't know. I I don't have a good feeling that it would do well on my channel. Eh, eh, I don't think my audience would watch this one. Next up. Oh, it's a long as fuck title. Oh, this, oh yeah, this is the one we checked out the trailer the other day, right? Or never mind. This is different. This is season two. Oh, this is not the trailer that we checked out. This is season two content. Sorry, we haven't even seen season one of this. I thought we watched the trailer for this, right? But I guess this is not it. It was the other, you know, girl that was tied up in a fucking pillar. If this is a good anime, you guys should, you know, pull for it. We should make this a community series so we can watch it in time. Pull for season one. Pull for season one. Maybe this can replace Slime Diaries. Next anime. Bye Bye Earth. Okay, how much more is there? Jesus, fuck. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, let's look at the cover picture. Okay, furries, furries, uh, isekai and furries, maybe? This one is called, uh, Bye Bye Earth, swordplay, 20% tag, okay? In a world of anthropomorph- uh, furries, in a world of furries, Belle LeBlanc was born as the only human being. <laughs> I was the only human in a furry world, okay? Having no fangs, furs, or scales, she was called face- Damn! Wait, 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 wait! This sounds interesting. The furries are discriminating against the main character because we don't have fur. We don't have fangs. Wait, this could be a power fantasy in the making, bro. Hold the fuck up. 
I want to be part of this world, right? Having no fangs, she was called Faceless, a slur, bro. And she lived a lonely life with no one else she could identify with. With such longing in the heart, she sets out to decide... Uh, she, set, she, she decides to set out on a journey to find her roots, carrying the wrong ding, a great sword as tall as she is. She doesn't know how many adversities awaits her along the way. So... This is seemingly like an underdog story, some sort of, you know... Uh, power fantasy story, but like, you know, she's getting discriminated on as a, a human in like a demi-human world. So I like that twist about this. I don't know. Maybe? Maybe? Undecided? Maybe. Maybe. I do like the concept of like demi-humans shitting on humans for once, you know? Next, we have... Oh, this is coming in 17 days? We're still th almost three, five, two and a half weeks out from this one. This is the trailer that we watched with the girl tied up. Why does nobody remember me in this world? Oh yeah, let's check out the synopsis once again. The era when the great race of the five tribes competing over hegemony on the ground ended with the victory of mankind led by Hero Sid. What does Hero Sid look like? Uh, it's this guy. It's looking pretty generic, huh? The cover picture looks very, very generic. But the people that's saying skip, I don't think you've seen this. A lot of people are saying this is fucking amazing. I don't really know. It looked really generic too. But like the trailer did look pretty fucking good in terms of polish. However, that world was suddenly overwritten, right? In front of a boy, Kai. In the rewritten world, Kai saw the scene where human lost the five tribal wars because of the absence of Hero Sid. So an alternate timeline where we weren't even there. Here, dragons and demons dominate the ground, and Kai is a forgotten existence from all human beings. However, after encountering the mysterious girl Rene, the girl, the wife that was tied up to a pillar, Kai decides to break this rewritten destiny in a world without heroes. He inherits the hero sword and martial art and challenges the mighty enemy races who reign. Um, this is not necessarily a isekai. I don't know. Maybe it is. It's, maybe it's a different world. I don't fucking. It's a different timeline. But there is a power fantasy component to it. Mm, we'll probably check out one episode. I'm willing to check out one episode. It did look very polished. So I'm going to check out one episode for sure. Next, we have Atri. My dear moment. Here's the cover pick. Uh, Slice of life? Slice of life? What is this about? The tags are Atri. <laughs> A genre, drama, romance, sci-fi. Okay, let's read the synopsis. In the near future, a sudden and unexpected... Sorry, I gotta fucking take a piss. I I'm sorry, I gotta take a piss right now, man. All right, I'm back. Oh. In the near future, a sudden and unexplained sea rise has left much of the human civilizations underwater. Ikaruga Natsuki, a boy who lost his mother and one of his legs in an accident some years earlier, returns disillusioned from a harsh life in the big city to find his old countryside home half swallowed by the sea. Okay, the plot's actually kind of serious. Left without a family, all he has to his name is the ship and submarine left to him by his oceanologist grandmother and her debts. Fuck you. The grandmother gave her fucking debt to us? This is some bullshit. His only hope to restore the dreams of the future that he has lost is to take up this opportunity presented to him by a suspicious debt collector, Catherine. They set sail to search the sunken ruins of his grandmother's lab in order to find the treasure rumor she uh, says to left there. But what they find is not riches nor jewels. It is a strange girl lying asleep in a coffin at the bottom of the sea. Atri is a robot. She must be the treasure. But her appearances and her wealth of emotions could fool anyone into thinking she's a living, breathing human being. In gratitude for being salvaged, she makes a declaration to Natsuki. Eh. Uh, eh. Uh. Shiba Tatsuya with the lolly. Ah, uh, robot waifu. Eh, uh, rom-com. Ro like, romance, drama with, with the waifu. I... 
I don't think this is it for us, man. I I I, I don't think this is it. Uh, the, uh, the the other robot one was kind of like it, it had that controversy of like oh it's a robot waifu it's a literal like um built-in robot for like you know companionship turning into a waifu this one seems to be have its own story which may be interesting but for my audience i'm not too sure i i'm not too sure next up Make heroin go... What the fuck is this? Uh, too many losing heroines. A1 Pictures, comedy and romance, rom-com. A1 Pictures. Let's look at the cover pick. Cute girls doing cute things maybe, yeah? Okay. Kazuhiko Nukumizu is a high school boy content, uh, content to blend in with the background mob. So again, the main character of this show is a fucking piece of shit that does nothing with his life. It's an NPC. Until he witnessed his most popular you know, classmates, Ana Yana Yanami, get dumped by her childhood friend. He felt like he had to try to comfort Yanami, but this let him become entangled with the other girls who have met to defeat out love? <laughs> what? So it's like, loser? Tries to rebound with popular girls is the premise of this show. Loser tries to capitalize on girls defeated by, you know, relationships and is now getting rebounded. That, that's the premise of this show. A1 Pictures usually does deliver really well, but I'm not really too sold on this unless, you know, there's a twist to this anime. Next one. Sengoku Yoko. Second season, second third, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not watching this on my channel right now. If you want to watch it, get that shit pulled in. I don't think we're going to be watching Ramen Neko either. I, I I don't think you guys would really give a fuck about a show like this, right? And then the final one is... What is this one, man? Okay, the cover picture is... Huh. Are these all... Are these husbandos? I think they are, right? They they look like male VTubers. They look like male VTubers. Fantasy, mystery, and supernatural. Delic I don't have a good feeling about this. Hailing from the prestigious noble house of Deriko, Dari Deriko is an Erito member of the Blood Pack Council with a promising future. What are they, vampires, bro? When the Blood Pack Council, the highest governing body for the vamps, vampires, assigns a special militant mission to Dari, he flatly refuses it. Having lost patience, Gerard, Dino, and Henrique, who are also council members, the, the husbandos here, right? Serving the same term as Dari, rushes to the house of Dedico to persuade him. What they witness there is Dari taking care of an infant himself. Meanwhile, there has been a series of mysterious murders targeting the vampires. The Dari, and Dari also seems to have a history of Pendulum, an antisocial org that's uh, thought to be the mastermind behind these murders. This is the record of Noblesse Oblige. Scramble of child rearing by the noble vamps. Can Dari... I... So, like... This is not for us. This is for like a Yaoi BL audience. It's really, you know, hot husbandos taking over, taking care of kids. But then there's like a murder mystery behind the scenes as well. Ah, I, 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 I don't think this is it. Like, can you, can you guys say that this is it? I don't think this is it, right? The art does look pretty sus. The, the art, I mean, the husbandos, right? Look really fucking sus. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that's it. And then there is some TV shorts. I don't think this really matters. Obviously, we're still watching Tensura, right? These are the leftovers from the last season. And that pretty much does it, guys. This is the final list of, you know, all these different animes that we're going to be watching. What are you guys, like, most excited for? Personally, I am most excited for a parry anime just to see, like, if people are going to watch it or not. Because, like, that's my personal interest. But I don't think that it's going to do well. I think that Oshinoko will do quite well. I think that, like, um, Isekai Suicide Squad might do decently well. I think that Tower of God will do average. I think that BBL Elf might do, like, amazing for a bit and fall off. I think that Nokotan will be, like, a viral hit moment where maybe it does well in the beginning and kind of falls off. Who knows? And there's a lot of random ass Isekais. Like, I think that some shitty Isekais, right? Like, the... You know, the dad isekai with the two kids, or the isekai where the guy just doesn't want it. He just wants to die, doesn't even want to level up, right? Or, uh, like, I feel like those isekais, these random isekais, might just pop off on our channel. I hope that Wistoria does well, but I think it might do bad. I don't know, I just have a bad feeling about Wistoria based on the trailer reaction. It might be like the Reign of the Seven Spellblades kind of moments, right? 
And there's some other rom-coms that we might check out, like Roshi Dere, right? Like the Russian girl. Is it gonna be actually that good? Like, is the trap senpai gonna be that good? Is my step sibling gonna be good? I have no doubt that the first couple episodes will like pop off in the beginning. But what really matters again at the end of the day is, you know, what happens after that? Pseudo Harem? Why should I check out Pseudo Harem? Pseudo Harem sounded kind of pretty shitty, right? Because it's just like this dude shows up, expectations of having a harem, then he just realizes, and then there's this one girl in the club that just like chases after him. The premise of it wasn't that enticing to me, but maybe this premise is actually, you know, not doing it justice, and maybe the show is actually better than it seems. And if it's actually that good, maybe we can check it out, but I don't know. This is the overall list of animes that we're going to be checking on in summer 2024. And again, this is how it works in every season. We do a shotgun approach. We kind of scope out which animes we're going to check out. We do a shotgun approach. We just randomly post videos. If they do well, we keep it. But the moment that the average viewership, again, it's easy to do well in the first episode. But the true viewership, the floor, right? The floor, baseline floor of viewership is determined by the community series we're watching right now. And if the community series viewership, right, if these weekly seasonal animes suddenly fall below that community viewership average level, then that's when we drop and move on because I'm not making videos for an existing audience. People have decided they don't want to watch and they got to move on. That's just kind of how it works in, you know, YouTube stuff. But that's it. Summer 2024, get hyped, and I, I'm gonna do like a tier list video. And I think that we're gonna do something like this, like each you know season, because it's actually pretty fun to check out all the different animes and get hyped up about it.